It's not only for old people, but more interestingly, all the interesting ideas, all the progressive ideas are now coming from the young politicians. And I thought, wait a minute, I want to get in on that action. <laughs> because, you know, I, I studied politics and politics has always been something I was interested in and passionate in. Um, but uh, I didn't think that it was something I would actively do. Maybe I thought I could do it at a tech room level or whatever, but I didn't think of doing it at being at the forefront until 2008 happened and completely inspired me and that's why I joined up to 2008 um, and, and, and whether it's political dynasty as such I mean I joined different parties so it's not really <laughs> but you'll always be attacked with that one uh, well you know, they, you, they will always they will attack they will always find something to attack you that's why I learned in politics so it doesn't matter what it is they will always find something and, and really as long as it's not something that tarnishes your integrity uh, and, and, and your values and, and, and your work, then you shouldn't worry about it. If it's going to be personal attacks, you know, just let them do it. And what are you going to do, right? Uh, it's Malaysia. Uh, it's, uh, not just Malaysia, even here. Personal dirty politics is everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's terrible. But if you're going to let yourself be consumed by it, then you shouldn't be a politician. Right? Uh, I mean, that's really one caveat. Like, don't go into politics if you are not prepared to be, you know, Slaughtered. You criticize is one thing, but really just going for your family, going for everything that you can think of, um, that's going to happen anywhere, I think. And, and the more uh, influence uh, or more influential and the higher you get, you know, obviously the more it will happen. Uh, and I think, but that shouldn't be, that, uh, that's not a reason for me to stop. Uh, I think that's more, uh, even more reason for me to go on. Um, as long as, again, it's not my integrity at stake, you know, and, and so on. So, Lastly, uh, there's a good question on what I would do if uh, you know I ever if we ever win the election. Um, I think the first thing that we need to be done, and this is not just in the education ministry, but in every ministry possible, is um, stop the corruption. Uh, uh, I want to focus on education. Sure, but I'm also talking about corruption in the education system okay. now. One of the reasons, look, I'll give you a good example of something, an issue that I bring up all the time. Uh, one Bestari Net, which is a system that was implemented in our education system in the last uh, three years. It was a big contract, a <coughs> billion ringgit contract given to YTL to implement uh, broadband in every school in Malaysia, 10,000 schools, yeah. 10,000 schools in Malaysia implement broadband. Um, essentially, yes, broadband, YTL, yes, broadband plus to install virtual learning uh, software through what they call the VLE, Virtual Learning Environment. It's basically e-learning, e-classroom. I mean, this is a huge contract. Uh, and of course, the question is also, you know, whether YTL has the uh, capacity to implement such things. They've never in the education business before, but you know, then they bought over Frog, which is a UK company that did uh, VLEs and so on and so forth. Um, that's the first question, but secondly, Look at the implementation and how can such a thing happen? It's just beyond uh, my mind. Anyone in IT, and my first degree was in IT, so I can tell you this as well, would know that if you were to do a rollout of 10,000 sites of anything, that you would do it in phases. Yeah, start with 500 schools. It works, it doesn't work, find out why it doesn't work, fix it. Expand 1,000 schools, 2,000 schools. Nope, give you a contract, one shot, 10,000 schools. But what does that also mean? It also means they get to install their Delco tower at 10,000 schools. And they use the tower to sell the yes service commercially as well. So, what does it sound like? Right? It sounds like a very fishy dealer, uh, which I have questioned many times. <coughs> but the point is this. How can such a thing happen? It's because it's so centralized that the minister makes all decisions and he doesn't care. That's also why we've had so many arbitrary decisions in our education system all this while. One day we have English schools. Next day, you know what? We shouldn't have English schools anymore. Then, oh regret, none of our people can speak English. Let's teach math and science in English. Seven years later, maybe we shouldn't teach math and science in English. So how are we going to, we can't produce good students because we keep messing with these policies. Why? Because the minister has too much power. If I were education minister, the one thing I would do is reduce the power of the minister. We have two structures 
in the education ministry, the ministry itself and the education department. Right now, it is uh, it's a mess because it's too political. Everything is controlled by the minister. So the teacher is very confused. He gets instruction from the headmaster. He gets memo from education department. He gets memo from education ministry. Who does he listen to? Right? And you sh so this is where problems occur. Um, what I would do is actually um, try to see how we can rationalize the powers between the education department and education ministry and make it more independent. So I would advocate for an independent examination board that together with the curriculum board um, and together with the uh, school inspectorate. These should not come under the ministry. These should be separate independent bodies. Uh, and I think there are many examples all over the world that we can learn from. So this one few things are the structural reform. Stop corruption, structural reform, and thirdly, decentralization. But again, because the level and detail of decentralization is something that we have to you know, really look and see what's uh, suitable for our country. I'm not saying decentralize everything and let the schools run everything. I'm saying let's look for the best um, sort of level. Right now, they are already doing it, um, but it's really not enough. And they're only decentralizing, decentralizing expenditure for certain schools. So some schools essentially have um, basically have more decision making in terms of their budgeting, and some schools, you know, everything is controlled by the government. So I think that's not enough. I think you have to go further. You have to let principals hire teachers as well. Um, perhaps reform of the education service as well. I think that's something you have to look at. Uh, not only improving the quality of teachers, but also how you make it, how you make the teaching profession more professional. Maybe we have to look at some kind of certification process or, or, or licensing, where people have to gain a teaching license, and with the teaching license you can go and sell your services to any school and whichever school that can give you the best deal, for example, can get you. I mean, these are ideas that we can think about and talk about. Um, I think for us in the opposition to come up with a comprehensive education policy that is as thick as the nation education blueprint is impossible because we just don't have the resources. Education blueprint costs them 20 million to make. We just don't have that kind of money and they have all their you know, systems, assistance researchers. We do all our own research because parliament doesn't pay for any researchers in Malaysia. So it's just impossible. But what I can tell you is some of these broad line ideas. And so these are essentially a lot of structural reform. Okay. It's okay. five o'clock. It's past five o'clock. And I'm tired of talking. Yeah. 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 Especially when DAP and PAS are not seen eye to eye, and other virus appear to be torn by each other. So, um, once again, thank you, thank you. we are very grateful. Yes. Thank you all for coming. And we to meet us here today in London, um, despite your busy schedule. So, we hope that you can address them again in your next I hope so. I hope so. Let's just try to meet again next time. Right. Now, let me invite my team member and also the founders, one of the founders of the NBC, which is Mr. Tan Wapia, to give a little bit of introduction about who is Monsoon and what we do and about what kind of activities we have been organizing so far. Hello, uh, I'm uh, Tan Wapia and uh, come from the land of the monsoons. That's what we call ourselves Monsoon's Book Club. And uh, I'm sorry for the very short notice about this uh, event. In fact, it was just a few days ago that uh, we heard from the students and they wanted, to give, wanted us to give a helping hand. And that's what Monsoon Book Club is all about. Uh, we do try to facilitate or help to facilitate uh, events of this uh, uh, nature. Uh, some of you, or most of you, probably have attended some of our uh, previous uh, uh, events in the last few months, which includes uh, uh, economist uh, banker who gave a, a small lecture teaching on the economics uh, issues in Malaysia and general theory. We have uh, Zunal giving us a treat uh, about his cartoons and so on. We organize uh, 
an event, uh, at Hyde Park Corner, which is a bit of a picnic, and also an attempt at uh, speaking at Hyde Park Corner. Uh, also, we are associated with the, uh, uh, the, the, the talk by the G25 member, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Farida Nordin, and the... Sorry? Arifin. Arifin, sorry. <laughs> now, uh, future events is always in the pipeline, but as with monsoons, we cannot predict when exactly will it happen, but we know it will happen. Uh, we, uh, one, one of the dates to bear in mind would be sometime uh, September, you know, it's the October, November, where we are teaming up with Southeast Asia festival which will be organizing a one-month event and a monsoon book club is teaming up with the Southeast Asia festival to do a visual uh, exhibition and the subject matter is disobedient art in in history in, in the post-independent period the idea is still at the formative stage uh, one of the possibilities would either be an exhibition as well uh, by Zunal during the same period, or we might, uh, might we might only uh, invite a Singapore cartoonist. Very recently, uh, became an issue in Singapore, uh, Chan Hock Chai. So these are all possibilities and future talks. Uh, so so please bear with us if you have very short notice about our events because. Like him coming, we have very short notice, and uh, we were informed of that uh, and that possibility only a few days uh, ago. So that the way things are, uh, we try to be interactive. We have a website, monsoons, we spell with an S, monsoons book club. We call ourselves monsoons book club. The name monsoons came about because uh, some forty years ago, probably forty years ago when uh, a group of uh, students uh, whom I was associated with uh, published a cartoon history of Malaya and uh, that book happily is still in uh, publication has been translated into Malay and Chinese as in the fourth edition so that's the inspiration the word monsoons the book title is called Where Monsoons uh, Meet and a website is monsoonsbookclub.com uh, and if you have any suggestions of talks or if you know of interesting authors uh, or people potentially who could inspire future authors or students then do write to us and uh, yeah, we will try to accommodate. Thank you very much. to thank Roger for opportunity us to give us a chance to co-host this event, Roger Pio. Um, so, when I would like to know whether you'd be interested in a, a potential speaker in the Chief Minister of Penang. Would anyone be interested to come and see him? I mean, could we have a show of hands that you want to see him one day? If he's got to, yeah, for next week. Up, if next it can week. be done. Uh, because there's no point inviting him if, if none of you are interested. This is a separate event. Separate from oh, yes, uh, in next week. week. In a week's time, it will be this Sunday if we can facilitate it. Is anybody interested? Would you all like to come and see Lin Wadeng and throw him a list of questions about where the future of Malaysia is, for instance? We don't know where to start with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, make sure he listen to your video and say something new. Yeah. So, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, before you leave, before you leave or have a private session or photo session with YB, sure, sure, sure. I'd like to tell you of another event to be organized next week by another organization, which is Dinner and Dialogue with Sia uh, Lingua Ing on the 14th of July. So for further details, please can you guys contact Ben Singh? Ben, can you talk a little bit about this event? Oh All right, okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for those who are interested to... <laughs>
Because it's going to be happen in a week time. So we just want to make sure we have enough crowd to organize this event. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want